It's now. The time is here. Uh, we're loaded up. I got the final few pieces in the car. Um, I went last night and got all the, the pack and the big stuff loaded up with Justin. And we are headed out right now to go meet Justin and his dad to leave for Colorado. This is the beginning. So welcome to the beginning of the story. And we're excited for you to tag along for the rest of it. We'll see you wherever the road takes us. All right, guys. We are here. We are loaded up, the coolers, all the gear, all the months and months of preparation. It's finally time for us to head out. John, Andrew, Brian, and Mike are already in Colorado. We're sitting here questioning our life choices. So we made the mountain absolutely unreal. Can't see 50 yards. Brian's making coffee. Wondering when our buddies are gonna show up or if if, if they're, they're going to show up there's snow there hopefully it's supposed to warm up so hopefully that'll be melted off by this weekend uh so the next 24 hours we're going to be in the dodge so how we feeling bud good I'm ready ready to drive <laughs> <laughs> ready or not the kiddos everybody's saying goodbye love you love you big hug <laughs> I'm gonna miss you for 10 days. Yeah. Hold down the fort. Yeah, buddy, not on the camera. I'm gonna edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Bye. Kill plenty. When you plan for these things for so long, like Justin's been, this is basically, you said year three, mm -hmm. like a planning basically. Yeah. Uh, it kind of fell in my lap this year, so I've not had nearly as long, but still the anticipation, the build up over the past like, what, six, seven, eight months, we've been oh, yeah. really nailing down things. Mm -hmm. And when it's finally here, it's like, it, it's, uh, it's amazing to say the least. Hopefully we get into some bulls. I know the weather's bad out there right now. It's snowed about a foot, maybe even two feet up at higher elevations. This is crazy. Just look around at this. Snowed 28 inches yesterday. Look up at the sun. Just look at the sun, how, how much fog there is. That'll give you a good indication. So yeah, check the sun out. You normally can't stare directly into the sun. It's crazy. And you can stare. But the biologist said there was elk in the area we're going. Uh, and also said that uh, with the warm ground temperatures and higher temperatures to come this weekend, that everything should be melted off pretty, pretty soon. So hopefully we have the next full week of pristine hunting conditions. So that's where we're at now. Somewhere in eastern Colorado, uh, we're about uh, three hours, 45 minutes away from uh, where our destination, and uh, we're not going to reveal exactly where we're going just for you know the sake of public land hunting and all those rules that you know unwritten rules. But we're at a Love's truck stop. We found these little pancake porky deals wrapped around some sausage and some pancakes. It's like 35 degrees right now, and <laughs> we're used to 95 degree weather, so we're all pretty cold. But uh, we're making good time. It's still, I don't know what time, it's like six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning or something here, I don't know. But we're just driving, guys, and uh, yeah, we're gonna head in, stop at a Walmart, get some tags, and hopefully make it into our camp by midday or so. So we're having fun, having a blast already, and we'll update you as we keep going.
The kill we found was. Hey. Found us. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if I'm in focus or not. I can't see nothing. But we have arrived. Basically, right at you. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Actually, we just met up with the guys. Again, I apologize. I don't know if I'm in focus or not. Can't see anything. We are at the first leg of what's going to be a long journey up through where we're camping. Uh, so we're going to keep going up this wildlife uh, public land area. We are going to park, set up like a base camp, and then from there head further into the mountains to start elk hunting. We're extremely excited. We're extremely pumped, as you can tell. And uh, here we go. How's the trip in, dude? It's awesome. It wasn't that bad, really. I'm pumped, dude. I'm pumped. Even though we got two foot of snow up here on this mountain, we, we did see a local. We talked to a local, and he said, this will be melted off. He said, it'll melt no time. Fired up. How are you feeling, Mike? Just Tired. Keeps going up. Tired. Okay. Not bad though. We we That's we had uh, some pretty good uh, nights in the hotel. So, so we spent two nights in a hotel. Nice. When we come up through here, it was uh, like you was in a snow globe. I'd say we're gonna miss hey, our, our beds tonight. Yeah. It's gonna be a cold night, boys. <laughs> we said we thought about sleeping in a truck in our sleeping bags, just depending on where we end up. I'm at. sleeping at porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> We got going on this morning, dude. It's cold, and I'm getting my coffee. I've not had my coffee yet, or my breakfast. It doesn't sound like it's going too good, does it? Crank it up a little bit. Mike, how are we doing this morning, dude? Man, we were doing all right. I'm trying to get mobile, joints moving. Mm -hmm. Do a little dance there, Brian. Tell us about it. We're going to have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> this is Brian's tent that he slept in, in the back of this truck. <laughs> Boss man, how are we doing? A little cool, but we're making it. Yep. A little Irish. A little Irish. We got there, dude. Man, a little sip of coffee. I'll be a human here in about five minutes. <laughs> It is absolutely beautiful this morning. So last night was extremely cold. Everything is, like the snow is hard. It's reading like 22 degrees. We slept in the truck, all except for Brian. <laughs> Brian put his tent up in the back of the truck. Look here, what a beast. And he just next leveled it. Said he didn't even get cold until what time, Brian? Uh, about five o'clock this time. So. Yeah, I, I, hopefully this is the coldest, that was the coldest night of the trip. I slept like a dream. I don't know. I I took a Tylenol PM and was out. Out like a light. It was good and warm in the truck. We woke up occasionally to start it. But yeah, we're uh, getting our stuff together this morning. Going to make some coffee, eat a little breakfast, and then kind of play it by ear. Try to make our way further and further back 
towards the elk. So that's on the agenda. We'll see you guys in a bit. How are you, bud? Doing good. Got you a little coffee going this morning? Yeah, yeah, we're steeping. It's uh, a lot colder than, feels colder than it is, <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My nose is the only thing cold, really, but it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good week. Alan, how'd you rest up? Pretty good. So we got a sunrise like some, somebody only like God could paint. Check this out. Sun's coming up in the east. We live 26 hours in that direction. <laughs> it's on the breakfast menu, bud. Strawberry granola. Dude, that shot's awesome. The sun's peeking right around the corner. That could literally be a, a look at this shot right here, John Andrew. This could be a, a granola, a strawberry granola peak refuel commercial. Like this, the sun's just like right behind the package right there. Did you see that? And then I just go up like this. <laughs> Peak refuel sponsor us, dudes. Hey, Jeremy, you got, uh, <laughs> Brian, open your pouch up there. So we got a couple methods for coffee. We got the instant coffees, and then we got the black rifle go ahead. <clears throat> seat bags. Yep, steep bag. You see your spell? Oh, you're using it. Yeah. Oh. I got the instant black rifle going on. It's good. It's really good. Oh. <sighs> Yep, that ain't happening yet. <laughs> a little too early. Mountain Ops, if you see this, let's get this product placement right here. Let's see, let's go with this hand. We got the ignite going on. <sighs> oh, so good, so good, especially. It's one thing when you're at home, but when you're out here like every little thing is like heightened the taste flavors a good cup of coffee still a lot of the same thing we're just kind of moseying around right now getting our stuff together eating drinking I head that way soon though so <laughs> What's up everybody? I want to give a quick update. We finally made it. We spent the past hour or so getting back here and it's only a couple of miles. But uh snows had everything covered up. We got stuck once, had to dig out. But we made it. We actually uh, ran into some other groups. So we're here at uh, kind of our base camp initial location that we wanted to get set up. They actually, there's old forestry cabin that has, that's, that's built here that some guys are staying in. Got several different groups here, horse trailers. And, uh, and yeah, so this place is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And so, we got back here, we got parked. We're gonna get our gear together and make some plans. So the, 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 just so you know what's going on, the goal is for two different groups, cause there's four shooters, two groups, two shooters each, to basically hike in the back country uh, and basically spike tent, set up for a couple of days. 
and just hunt from there. And uh, But this is kind of our base location for the, the rest of the trip. So we'll probably come out every three days or so, rest up good, eat good. And, uh, but yeah, you can just see, man, this place. Let me go over here and show you this cabin. Duck. Kind of a memory while here. Lots of people coming, you know, put their successes, six by five, four by fours, five by fives from many, many years, even some stuff from 2004. And they got a pot belly stove in here. Her big, actually it's like a five gallon drum stove. Uh, so killer little camp, dude, little cabin. Hmm. So this group uh, has it set up. They got their clothes dry and standing here. And so really cool, really cool spot. guys I'm gonna give a quick update we've been following this elk trail for I don't know probably five six seven hundred yards like a long long way you heard one you heard pew 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 What's so our current situation, Justin? We're surviving. Surviving. To a T. No doubt about it. How do the military guys do this right here all the time? <laughs> Hacking backs on their thing, on their backs. 
You know what? We eat over there today. It says potato soup. It's looking really thick. I don't care if it's cold enough water in it. All right, guys. Here we are. Our first spot camp. It is uh, almost the sun is set. We are soaking wet. Our feet are anyway. Um, we got our boots by the fire. We got our socks over the fire. Luckily, we got spare socks. Uh, we got a, we do got a fire going, so that's good. Um, excited about that. We got our tents set up. And uh, yeah, like Justin said, we're literally this is survival at this point. Like. We're in the mountains of Colorado right now, elk hunting. But the good news is, we had a bull at 50 yards, probably about 300 yards back behind us. In front of us, we have a couple of big meadows, and so we're just under the top of the ridge. And uh, I think we're gonna get up in the morning, maybe even leave everything spiked down and just kinda go hunt for a little bit and come back maybe. I don't know. Kind of, we're we're just playing it by ear. So hopefully we hear something tonight that may give us a direction to go. But if not, we will uh, we'll get after them in one way or the other. So luckily, this the one positive about the snow has been the tracks. We followed elk tracks all the way to to where we saw the ball, the bull, which we, was a different elk than the tracks we were on. But still, we know they're in this area. So we're gonna eat get warm get dry the best we can and uh and call it a night probably we're all pretty tired we've we've been hiking uh, for the past like four hours or so so my birthday so what better could you ask for man it's incredible it really is I want to do this for so long finally get to do it it just don't seem real so. and we had a bull uh, what 50 yards today <laughs> you can't make it up And then we're hearing a bugle, a bugle from the direction that we saw it. So, who knows? Hunting pressure is probably going to pick up in a few days, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And luckily, we are in this direction of the pressure. So, right. if anybody comes up that way, if they push it back, it'll be. Yeah. Good morning everyone, it's day two of our hunt. Uh, we had a pretty decent night's rest. It's extremely cold. Oh, personally, I tossed and turned a ton. Got really cold about 2 a.m. We can't get our fire going this morning. Pyro putty, 
I'm disappointed. I don't want your sponsorship. <laughs> Crap, don't work. <laughs> Maybe it's just, it's probably user, user defects. I'll say that, but anyway, we got some coffee. We had, uh, after it got dark, we, I think we come to the conclusion that there might've been two bulls last night, right? Mm -hmm. One back behind us and one out in front of us. So I didn't hear anything. I was awake a lot of the night. I didn't hear anything like up here. I didn't hear any barking. I didn't hear any more, hear any more bugles that I could tell. Um, so hopefully no one pegged us. And uh, we can strike up a bull here pretty soon. But we're going to get a little bit of breakfast and a little bit of coffee and then and, uh, head out. All right, everyone, quick update. We've been slow still hunting our way through um, just the timber. <laughs> the word I'm looking for. Basically, there's a ridge with a bunch of fingers. And then in those fingers, there's different meadows. And we're in crazy amounts of elk sign. Like we see a rub right now that's like as big as a telephone pole. And there's tracks and trails everywhere. We've just been walking, doing a little bit of calling. Um, we're confident in this, this area, but uh, just taking our time, going through it. It'll happen eventually. Um, let me show you our current situation with our, our feet has been the biggest problem. Uh, well, the snow, which caused the feet the biggest problem. Let's look at our boot situation. <laughs> Check out our boot situation. We burned our boots <laughs> to survive. Look at that. So, and I burnt my insoles trying to get them dry so I don't have insoles. Justin almost burnt his boots up. Um, all of our feet have been pretty wet. We burnt the strings off of Alan's boots. <laughs> so, it's been like... And your insoles. If you're watching this, look at this, look at this hair right here. If you're watching this right now and you're like considering going on an elk hunt, totally do it. However, don't skimp on gear. I know a lot of people say, you know, spend your money on tags. No, you need to spend money on good gear and then get a tag. Yeah. <laughs> 
and uh and now it, in all seriousness it's a lot of fun it's it's really good but it a lot of it's survival isn't it mm -hmm. like probably more than the hunting Especially when you walk into 28 inches of snow, it's just like trying probably, to stay warm. We probably could have focused more on survival in the beginning. Yeah. Because we hunted so hard for two and a half days now. Yeah. It's catching up with us. What else are you going to do though? It's still fun. One trip. Way to go. Check this out. Good stuff. Mm. Oh gosh, dude. Is it good? I'm believe you'll try it. Today is September the 13th, my wife's birthday. So when you watch this, happy birthday, honey. I miss you. I'll be able to call you here in a minute when we gain about 400 feet of elevation. This is day, we left on Wednesday, and today's Sunday. So, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, day four. <laughs> I have to count on my fingers. Um, Hunting three days. Two and a half. Yep. This is our yeah, second and a half day of hunting. And to be honest, it's kind of surreal. It's like you envision and play out what your hunt's going to be like. And honestly, it's probably like everything I expected. If that makes you know how like you envision something and then you get there and then it's like exactly like that <laughs> like I think that's what this is except nothing can prepare you for the suffering part of it and I don't mean to say that to like be negative or like to steer people away from doing this because it's it's like a it's like top is that what it's called like top two fun mm -hmm. where it's like it's fun because you're like at the core of you're surviving you're 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 building your character you're you're experiencing like this roller coaster of the highest of highs and the lowest of lows like when we saw that bull day one and heard him bugling it was amazing and then you go now we're at a day and a half where we've not heard anything yeah. we've yeah, seen a lot of sign yeah, we, saw, we heard a half bugle this morning. Seeing plenty of sign, but no elk. And it, you get kind of in a low spot. And then you start missing your family. And you're hurting. And you're cold. And your feet's wet. And like, I just want to document this stuff because, like in the moment, it's just, I don't know, like every... Like it means the world to get your boots off and get some, like get your feet dry. Yeah. Like that's the that's your number one on your priority list of, of everything in life. <laughs> yeah. Even if it means wearing Crocs by the fire and it's 28 degrees. Yeah. Justin and I have been wearing Crocs and Alan been wearing Crocs barefoot, getting our feet dry just so our boots and socks and stuff can dry out every night. Because when you're walking through snow, it's like walking through a river all day. This elk ragu pasta is the bomb. Shout out to Chad Mendez. Yeah, Chad Mendez. There he is, right there, standing. <laughs> Wearing your camo, dude. You look just like him right now. <laughs> <laughs> same, same physique. Chiseled. Burly man. Your mustache to better. So yeah, we're gonna eat, refuel, get water, and then head to the top of this mountain and hopefully get on something. But yeah, 
I hope that didn't sound like a lot of negative because I don't want it to be negative because we don't we honestly we don't have negative mindsets like we've been smiling and fist bumping the whole time like legitimately like yeah you're in misery to it <laughs> to a degree but there's like this like it's what you sign up for there's a difference between going into something knowing you're gonna work hard to get something and then suffering through that versus like other types of suffering anyway I'm just rambling I love you baby happy birthday Justin's birthday was two days ago he got to celebrate that here almost got a birthday bull almost got a birthday bull so that was cool Peace. Sneaking along calling and um, tried to take a look over into this basin here so we crested over this rock and as soon as I skylined there was three cows standing about 50 yards and they they just eased off as soon as they seen me they didn't they didn't really booger too hard but they just kind of scooted off down over the over the hill here so that's kind of how it goes whenever you're walking and calling. Trying to stalk something in six inches of ice is tough, but we're giving it all we got every day. Five, six miles a day, hard as we can go. It's just boots on the ground. It's what it takes. Guys, we made it back to camp. 
and uh, we're pretty spent. We we got coolers and we got ice cold Coke. I'm I gotta document this moment right here. Oh my gosh, that's the best drink of Coke I've ever had in my life. Debbie, if you're watching this, thank you so much. We forgot about these little guys till we got back to camp. Oh. How we doing, boys? Doing good. Double stacking. Doing double good, stacking? Man. Yep. Where's the double stacking at? Yeah, double stacking. Mm. So the boys tell us the good news of the other guys, where are they at? They're on a bull. So they're, we're supposed to meet back here today at base camp, but they're on a bull, so I think they're going to stay up. Hopefully we get a text here in a little bit, or a in-reach message, come pack some meat. We're going to race up. Get our stuff dry. Enjoy base camp. I'll give you a little tour here in a little while, but for now we're just gonna rest. All right, video update. We are sitting in this basin. Waiting on the thermals to switch. We've got a bull baited on the hill behind us. Right up there. So we're hunkered down on the hill across from him. Waiting on the wind to start coming down for the evening. And we're gonna try to set up on him. That's the deal. We've been kicked back, we took a nap. Ate a few honey stingers. Shout out honey stinger. Brian's over here getting a suntan. Sorry, sunburned. So he's past suntan. So anyway, that's the dealio. We're waiting on the on the thermals to switch for the afternoon, man. Hopefully this bull comes down. Fingers crossed. We've heard him two different times right here in this meadow behind us. Yesterday we couldn't get on him because of the snow. The day before that we were just out of position and he was bugling his head off down here. We couldn't do anything with him. And this morning we got all the way down here and uh, he bugled four or five times and uh, we couldn't cut across this open meadow to get to him. So we just let him go up the hill. We heard him bugling going up the bank over there and bed down. So hopefully he'll come back down this afternoon. We'll get a crack at him. So that's what's up. We'll check in later. Hey, and also here's a little fun fact for you. Check this out. Yep. A mouse chewed into my food bag the other night while I was sleeping. So just let me say this. Some of the dumbest mice in the world live in the Rocky Mountains. Because I had every kind of snack that you can think of in that bag. And that stupid mouse ate a flour tortilla. Pitiful. I mean, I can't get over it. All that trouble. Getting in my pack. Dragging my food out, and it ate a stinking flour tortilla. I had honey stingers, Snickers, granolas. Had it all, and it went for a flour tortilla. So that's all I got on that. But anyway, if you're out here ever in the future, tie your food up. Keep it up off the ground. Hey, we're still waiting on the thermals to switch, so uh, uh, if you're ever dumb enough to go on a backpack hunt, there's a Funny thing that happens about four or five days into the hunt, you start to fantasize about food that you can't have. So, uh, we're laying here on the side of a mountain, and we're going through every menu of every restaurant that we can think of. Me, personally, I've settled on a pepperoni pizza from the Purple Pig down in Alamosa. When I get out of these mountains, I'm gonna turn the doors off that place. <laughs> Brian, where you at? I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna wait for us to get out of the mountains. 
I'm gonna have one I'm, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can deliver it. <laughs> Mac, what's on your menu? Well, Brian has inspired me, and I really want like a. I don't know if I could do a 30 piece nugget from Chick fil A, but I probably could do 15. And the sad thing is, is that we're gonna be heading home, and the closest one is gonna be on a Sunday, and Chick fil A, being the Christian organization that they are, are closed on Sundays. So I'll have to settle for Wendy's burger probably. That's pretty weak. Yeah, if we drive out of here and Chick-fil-A's closed when we leave, probably be a riot in our vehicle. <laughs> we we may cut this hunt short this hunt short a day early just so we can hit a Chick-fil-A. No, we ain't doing that. We ain't quitting. No. We ain't that weak. <laughs> but it seriously that's that seriously is a phenomenon that happens about five days in. You really do start like dreaming about menus and you'd be laying in the bed at night thinking about pizza and steak and all that. Just a little fun fact. I mean, if you're ever dumb enough to do this, just expect extreme food cravings on about day five. Later. Me and Brian ain't bear experts by no means. Nope. We're following a bear trail out of here. I don't know, but that track, that's a big bear track, I it's think. Be bear. Anyway. Even though it's a black bear, I still don't know what I mean. We're a long way in. With any luck, maybe he'll kill us and eat us and just <laughs> pack us down a trail and poop us out at the truck. Yep. Apologize for any body odor. That's what I was, I was getting ready to say that <laughs> same thing. I apologize for any body odor. I went seven days because normally we go about three and then we take a shower, but I went seven because of the snowstorm.
he's seen, he's responded to us twice now, so he's seems to be pretty fired up. This is awesome, though. We're in the back country of Colorado, elk hunting, chasing bugling bulls. Doesn't get any better. Give a special thank you. He, well, honestly, from day one, the snow was so deep we couldn't get back here. And he said, I think you can make it. So we made it. We've been hunting a couple days. We got back to camp. We met back up with him. And he was gracious enough to uh, bring us out with him this evening. So special thank you to him and his family. It's been awesome so far. We still got a lot of hunts left. So probably going to close this evening out and uh, go back and get some food and get some rest. Good and beautiful morning everyone. Welcome to uh, base camp. I'm going to give you a little tour this morning and show what's going on. We're up and at them drinking some coffee. We just had the finest breakfast ever thanks to Mr. Justin Bray who happened to think of it and bring two dozen eggs, some bacon, some uh, a sausage. I mean, look at this spread right here. We've got Brian Manning a little bacon right now, even though he's allergic. <laughs> Alan, how is it? Good stuff. Mr. Bray, thank you, buddy. You're welcome. Got a little breakfast burrito action going this morning? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's give you a tour. So behind us we got a tent. It's where we sleep. John, you want some food, man? John's drinking a little coffee this morning. He's got the one man over here. How's the coffee? Perfect. Perfect. It's warm. You got gear your yard so going on. Gear dump, drying everything out. Drying some gear out. Go back for three out. more days. Text to my wife on the enrich. There we go. How's she doing? How's Lauren doing? That's good. Good. Mike, how we doing, bud? How's breakfast? How's that coffee? Coffee is excellent. Good. And I'm got up my knees are working another day another, another day, day in uh, Colorado on the mountain yeah. <coughs> so just kind of we've been uh, recording tons of video 
and I don't know what it's going to look like up to this point. Honestly, we're going to, I'll get back and edit it and throw it together. But this is kind of like a mid, uh, midway checkpoint. So we, we got together last night and uh, met back at camp. Basically just resting up, getting our stuff dry, eating good, um, recuperating. And then today we're going to leave base camp again, go back to the, the high country, uh, the back country, whatever you want to call it. Probably spot camp, uh, camp a couple more nights, hunt uh, a couple more days, and then we'll be back and be wrapping up our trip. So we're, today's Tuesday, so we got today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We actually have four days of hunting, possibly Saturday morning, depending on uh, what the circumstances are Friday with the elk, um, but we'll probably leave pretty early sometime Saturday so we can get back home Sunday and rest up for work. But... Still a lot of good hunting left, and we're excited. Our, our spirits are good. We're we're uh, the the physical part is tough. We're we're tired and we're worn out and cold and wet and everything else. But but it's good. It's really good. It's been an awesome trip so far. Uh, just the camaraderie, the fellowship, and I, and I knew that going in. That's just it's next level. That's one of those things you just stuff like this you have to experience for yourself. So. Anyway, we're gonna keep eating a little bit, drink up on our coffee, and uh, we'll see you guys hunting here in a little bit. Gore tags. <laughs> <laughs> My hind end. <laughs> All right, y'all. Quick update. This is our boot situation. Uh, shout out to Company Vask for making terrible products. No, I'm just, I'm kidding. I really can't say terrible because I've had these for a long time. Like, probably seven, eight years, honestly. <laughs> So they've been pretty good, but they never were comfortable, I'll say that. So, burnt soles, bottoms falling off. In the fire they go. We don't hold on to stuff around here. If it don't last in the back country, burn it. Oh. Uh. I bet uh, Alan would have really appreciated if you would have took those shoestrings out of there since you burnt his. <laughs> yeah, really. That's true. Yeah. So uh, the the Brays and myself on our first excursion into the back country have had a uh, a, a quite a, a fire extravaganza. Get the out of there, Alan, for we the fire. I burnt my soles uh, day two, so we had to those. Yeah, I've been uh, insult. My insoles were gone. Uh, we burnt Alan's shoestrings off and burnt his socks. And then we just burnt another set. We burnt part of Justin's Krispies. We b melted these on numerous occasions. They're supposed to be Gore-Tex, but uh, you, you walk in yeah. six inches of snow for 30 minutes and you are, I mean, Nothing ringing wet. So, But yeah, they, they serve their purpose for, you know, three, not three, but I guess... I guess I got them. I got them right before I got married, and I've been married eight years. So they, I mean, they lasted a pretty long time. I'll give them that. But uh, they lasted eight years and two days in the back country. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They lasted eight years up until I brought them here, and then two days in the back country, they fell apart. Yeah. <laughs> they fell apart on the first day, actually. What was that? If I had a dollar bill, I'd stick it in the suspenders. <laughs> so, here we are. We just, uh, we're sitting by the fire and we see seen uh, Jeremy come by. Flip you around here. What do you say, Al? <laughs> I mean, you got to What do you say, buddy? We're taking baths, man, like <laughs> wiping down with baby wipes. Yeah. I put some deodorant on. Yeah. First time in like five days, so. <laughs> I smell a little better than I used to. We're pretty ripe right now. Yeah. Well, there you have it. You go uh, take some desperate measures whenever you're at camp and you ain't bathed in uh, probably about a week.
Yeah. All right, guys, we are here with uh, some new friends from camp, Cody, Cody, and Cameron, and they had some success today. I'm going to let you uh, tell the story, but uh, tell us what happened, brother. Man, it was uh, quite an interesting experience. We were actually going to take lunch and decided we're going to give a call, a uh, kind of nice little open area, nice little meadow, and uh, we gave it a call for about 30 minutes or so and said, oh, we're going to go up and go and eat lunch a little further up, and then all of a sudden, we are all packed up, and look behind us and here comes two cows walking through the snow and I mean there was no mistaking that they were uh, that they were elk they they stood out so well in the snow um, gave a couple cow calls and I mean it was just like clockwork it was uh it was like a, a story tale that cow yeah. called came back and forth all of a sudden here she was on a string 30 yards in and we punched her and uh she, she ended up running right about, about well and right she started to clear the clear the tree line I guess right at the last I mean he's calling out ranges and both of us were knocked and we both drew it about the same time and I get anchored and I go to look down my pen and I can't see my peep sight was turned sideways yeah. so I'm telling him I'm like shoot 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 and she Rest stopped history. she, soon stopped, she stopped it was like it was stuck yeah, he punched one in her and, and she ran probably about 20 yards we cow called stopped her and then I mean you could see every step she'd take you could see I mean, she was she, she was, was hurting bleeding. yeah he fired I off. tried to shoot a follow-up shot because she was still standing and just did best I could without being able to see through my peep and I stuck an arrow right in the middle of a tree so <laughs> that didn't work so well but yeah. she went on off and just kind of walked a good ways and we could sit there and we watched through the binoculars and see blood on the snow so we knew we had pretty good hit yeah and we gave it 30 minutes I think before we went and started looking and followed the blood through the snow it was pretty cool it was, it was first beautiful hunting was the in the snow was tracking yeah. ever to be so honest at that point <laughs> we weren't too thrilled about the snow it was just making our feet wet and I mean yeah. it was loud it's crunching everywhere but that snow really helped us find her I think I mean it was Made the yeah. blood trail pretty easy. Yeah, and then we trailed her for what about a little over 200 yards, and then yep. there she was piled up. And she's quartered two. Yeah, took out the front lung. Yeah, so I caught one lung and ended up catching a little bit of liver, and then a little bit of back up into the gut. And so, um, good shot for what it was. You know, I was I was excited. First yeah. elk, hell yeah, five years yeah. took me a long time. We finally did it. So yeah. it's well, amazing how tough they are. Absolutely, how tough they are. I mean, we did it too, and I was I was kind of disappointed. Slash, also she it kind of glanced off a rib, but. Yeah, I mean, it did the job, so we're not complaining on that yeah, one. She so. was, I think it did a good quick yeah. kill on her, really. We yeah. thought she maybe she was doing better than she was, but I think she went to where she went, and that was yeah. it. We waited. It ended up being an hour before we really pushed up in there. We went 30 minutes, went, you know, went and looked, and went to wait another 30, and then went the rest of the way and found yeah. it. But. Well, we thought we could pack her all out. Three big old boys from Texas were like, we got this. We'll pack her all out. And so cape and all, we got her all caped out. We was like, man, we should have boned her. Yeah, that was, that was probably the heaviest shoulder. we'd ever been. We put our packs on, we all looked at each other like, yeah, yeah. that's pretty heavy. <laughs> Had to help each other squat up and stuff. It was, but it was a good trip. It was a good first experience. You know I mean? If it, uh, for packing the first one out, you know, five years, kind of taking a long time. We've learned a lot since then. And so uh, it, it all kind of came together. Snow, everything, what's going on. So... Uh, it was a great experience, man. It yeah. was awesome. Uh, kind of speechless at the first there for a while. You, yeah. know, you had to kind of kick me for a little bit to see if it was actually real. They didn't really have anything to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just like, oh, finally we did it. Yeah. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to finish up, bone out the meat, get in on ice, and then we got another couple of days. We're going to go back What's in. Today's Monday awesome. or Tuesday? Tuesday. So we got till Friday, probably Friday, I guess, and we'll yeah, go back three, in. Yeah. Finish the week. Might be we got another, three and a half. We another tag on us, so we'll go see if we can get another one. Maybe Sweet. get lucky and double up. So. Yeah, so. Congratulations, guys. Man, thank, thank you, sir. Here's when we're all old, and we're going to be looking at that cowhide on the wall and telling this story. We don't know how hard we worked to get that. <laughs> I guess the first year, and he was, he was real gung-ho. Ah, I'm not shooting anything but a bull. We've always been of the mindset the first legal thing we see is going to be put shit in or whatever. Stomach started growling, so we'll start cutting. <laughs> Last night. Oh, those Good was thing. in my thing. Yeah, I need yeah, to. Well, I didn't sleep with them. I, uh, I did the last couple nights. Those was in my pack. You can pack that, brother. I'm trying, man. <laughs> you can see everybody else is packed up, and I'm still got yard stuff. Sleeping over. stuff and food stuff. I'm just trying to make sure I get everything. Right. <clears throat> Mr. J.A. is almost done, looks like. Ready. Yo, bear bag. Uh, 
I'm ready to go right here. Let's check these other guys out. Mike, how's the packing going, dude? I'm here wondering if I'm going to be able to get it all in here or not. I've done stuck my foot down in there twice. <laughs> so it's about as mashed as it's going to mash, I think. I think you're going to do it, man. Hell yeah. The trick is trying to get all the air out of these uh, waterproof bags. Yeah. And... Uh, Maybe if I just go up on the mountain and not eat, and not take all this food, maybe I can borrow some off of my compadres. Yeah. I think they can pack all my food for me. I think so. so. We'll see. But we're going to head back in three or four days and kill an elk or two or four, and then come back down. It's been a good trip. Good company. That's jacked up on you. Yeah, he'd have been a really cool mount, you know. Yeah, man. Dang, what a front. <laughs> God. Oh. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, we have... That's what they look like, children. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, man. Water bottle with Becky and Sven out. What's up, everybody? It's uh, Tuesday, about one o'clock. We are hiking in to our new spiked, spiked camp spot. We get up on top of this mountain, set up camp, hunt for the next four days. Hopefully, get on some elk. So we're just grunting, heavy packs, a lot of walking. Stick with us, y'all. Hopefully, we can get it done. It's some tough honey for sure. So we just looking at the map on where we're going. And Justin informed me that see this mountain way back here? Yeah. That's the mountain we're going to. And then we're going over to the right. So thanks Justin for crushing everything in my body because I don't know that we're going to make it there tonight. We are at our second, well, my second spike camp of the trip. And this go around, I'm getting to hunt with Mike and Mr. John Andrew. Here's our setup. We got our tents, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, pillow. Getting a little lunch right now. John Andrews set up, Mike set up, and the view. <laughs> the view is amazing. Let me get it brightened back up for you. There we go. This place is like an elk bedroom, or at least has been. That it smells like you're laying, like with a bunch of elk. Like it literally, and this whole big drainage or whatever you want to call it, meadows and woods and whatever, is just eat up with sign. We heard two cows walking up earlier and thought they may come in, but the wind was so swirly that we didn't. They probably smelt us, so. But we're gonna hunt back up this way Go this evening. And uh, I, really, I feel like it's the snow's gone here, except for a little bit, praise God. The first leg of the trip, I'm not gonna lie, was rough. Like it was suffer fest. <laughs> now it feels I like that. it feels like I'm actually like fun camping and hunting right now. Where before it was just like, okay, you need to survive and get back home to your family. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we'll see you guys here in a little bit on the hunt, and hopefully have some action this evening. We heard this. We were close uh, to this spot yesterday evening and heard three different bulls. So hopefully. It picks up.
crazy kind of steel hunting calling a little bit I don't even know what the date is it's crazy how you lose track of time out here it's like just sun up sun down you hunt like I don't even know like we have to remind each other what day it is all the time <clears throat> story of our lives been drinking melted snow for about four days <laughs> it's getting ridiculous All day, every day. She's still right there, I see her. John's still on his way down there. It's a good distance down there. The cow's still right there. It's getting dark on us though, so he's gotta hurry. It's it's lighter than it seems in the, the video just because cameras don't pick up <clears throat> great light. Uh, at least this lens is not the best, but she's still right there. He's going out. I, I lost him. I can't see him anymore. I tried to film some. Anyway, fingers crossed this works out. And we've had a rough couple couple days hunting, just grinding, grinding, grinding. And uh, this is this is exciting. We're actually on an elk, and John's stalking her right now. So hopefully it works out. 
All right, y'all, last, last bit of light left. John's actually coming back up here. He, he pulled off the wind. It's terrible right now. It's going straight to her. She was still right there. I heard a bugle down there this, like, early, early last night, early in the morning. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. Actually, 1.17 to be exact. I checked my phone when I heard it. Um, so I thought there may be elk down there. But uh, we didn't see the bull. The bull could be in the area somewhere. Um, but definitely a cow and a calf right here. So we're going to keep after it, though. It's been fun. It's been a grind. It's been a lot of suffering, a lot of hard work. But uh, it's been it's been good, too. So, But uh, we're going to get some food, probably, and uh, bed down. All right, guys, another update. Uh, so it is, what is today? Thursday? Today's Thursday. We got up this morning, came out this ridge, and uh, bugled to see if we could hear anything. And we, we didn't hear any bugles last night. I didn't, did you? Um, came out this ridge, bugled this morning, see if we could hear anything. That way we could make a play, because uh, we kind of don't really have a plan right now. Um, so we just going to go back and hunt a saddle that we hunted yesterday where I drew back on the cow twice and we decided that we was out of water and we really needed water and we didn't want to go down to the bottom of the mountain because that means we'd have to come back up. So this is what we're doing for water. What do you think? I'm exhausted exhausted so we are melting snow and then we're going to filter it i guess it's a good thing that we do have a little bit of snow on the mountain because that prevents us from going to the bottom of the mountain so that's what you do to get water in the back country when you don't want to kill yourself to get back up
Friday. This is our last morning hunt. And uh, not heard a whole lot of elk talking over the last couple of the days. So uh, we're heading over into a place that me and John went into late last year. <coughs> we actually seen a bull up in here and found a lot of good signs. So we're just going to try to ease up through here and then drop over into that a little bit and hunt that real quiet and still and see what we can come up with. We've got a it's been a really good hunt uh, as far as being together and a whole group of new guys in here today this week and that's been a real good part of it and the elk have been a little funny snow came in pushed all of them down to where you wanted them to be at and then snow kind of started going away and hunting pressure picked up and elk kind of moved away a little bit so uh, that's why they call it hunting and not killing folks because uh, you know we uh, try to get out on them as quick as we can as good as we can but they have to cooperate with us but we're going to see what we can do this morning and uh, try to end on a good note. And if not, uh, we'll come back and try it again. again. Thanks. Good job. I hate being on the cameras. That's good. You did perfect. It's like you're made for the camera. homeless person in the mountains for 10 days, but look, <laughs> smack the grin off my face with the elk shit. That's going to be a thumbnail. You want to just start over? Uh, for breakfast, we got bold tuna creations, hot buffalo style, <clears throat> with a wrap, some beef jerky. Got a few other little knickknacks in here. We got uh, oatmeal, but we don't have enough water to make. <laughs> <laughs> so we're down to tuna. Yep. <clears throat> Dry food only. What's up, guys? <laughs> we are. Uh, this is a peculiar time of the trip, I think. It's, uh, we were sitting there and it's pretty much come to a closure, the hunt, it's our last day. And um, it's kind of like the reality of the chances of, of getting one are kind of dwindling away. And uh, it's uh, an odd time. It's an odd kind of mindset to be in because you're uh, for so long you have these hopes and you have these anticipations and your optimism is through the roof of getting on elk and you try and try and try you get here and you get slapped with reality and how hard it really is um, but I wanted to take this time to uh, document kind of what John Ender just said but basically you know you you either get defeated by these moments and you let it knock you back or you go home you get better you learn more, you research more, you get in better shape, and you ratchet it up another notch, as he said. Um, and you grow from it. You learn from it. You allow uh, tough times, um, adversity, um, failures. You allow those things to improve you as a person. You're learning, not losing. And so it's a really good way. And I think uh, if there's one big takeaway, too, this trip and to this movie that you guys are watching it's that when you put yourself through adversity and through difficult times you're going to be strengthened um, you're going to you're going to come out with uh, more character uh, you're going to come out with more perseverance just like um, scripture says you know, uh, you know uh, suffering produces in you um, perseverance and character and hope and I think uh, that's the big takeaway that through all this, even though you don't achieve your ultimate goal of getting an elk, you still learn, you still grow, and at the end of the day, we're going home better men than when we came. Um, well, this has been an adventure, um, something I've never done before, but it's um, taken me to a place. Um, I heard Jeremy giving his um, 
take away. Um, it takes you to a place of where it takes all the superficial um, life out of it. It brings you down to just the uh, you're surviving on bare necessities. Um, something we're not used to in life. We're used to conveniences. We're used to um, things being um, at our fingertips. And you know, it's like it's easy to get food. It's um, somebody just hollers, "Come and get it," and we go and sit down and eat. Um, this is you um, have to make sure that you have the essential items that necessary to prepare a meal out in the wilderness. Um, no contact with the outside world. Um, it's been a, a definite. Um, I'm still processing, and I think I will for a while. I tried to log a few things so that I can build on that as a takeaway. But um, I think um, it brings us to the place where um, God really wants us to rely on Him and the basic skills that He's given us um, in life. But um, I think it's brought me to a place that I, I want to I want to survive more on Him and depend more on Him. And um, that's pretty much what I took away as of right now. Uh, there's a whole lot of uh, things that um, I'm still processing, but um, it's been an adventure. I've enjoyed the, the um, building relationships with people that I before knew only as another individual, but I didn't really know them relationally. And um, I've enjoyed building that, and um, I'm thankful for that. Thankful for people, and I'm glad that God gives us um, people to make this journey with. I think the biggest thing I take, take away from this well, related to elk hunting is that it's no joke. Um, we hike the hills of eastern Kentucky and, you know, it's up and down and mountainous. Growing up, we hike them all the time, but there's nothing compared to this. Um, with the camp on your back, it's just something about it that just humbles you and lets you know that you're not near as tough as you need to be. Um, I think I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was um, and more prepared than I thought I was, but at the same time it's it's a lot tougher than anybody can can explain so you guys out there that um, do this for 30 days straight um, hats off to you it's um, it's incredible 10 days whooped me um, and, and that's related to elk hunting but related to uh, life in general um, when you get stripped down to just food shelter water and and hunting um, it really just takes everything else away. Um, all the superficial stuff that doesn't mean anything. Um, we've not watched the news out here. We've not talked to anyone. Um, and it just takes all the negativity out. So I think um, it's a more positive experience than anything, um, no matter how tough it is. And another thing is I, I miss the, uh, um, the adventures that um, my wife and I would go on like this. And I can't wait to to do that again with our children and uh, do this sort of thing. We met a guy here in camp that does this every year with his family for 21, 25 days straight and just gets away from everything. And um, that's something to admire and something to look up to because his, his, his son is a great person and a great kid. He's only 12 and he can do things that I can't do. So um, it's something I really look forward to, to pursuing with my family. Um, and getting back to that and I and another thing I miss my family like crazy um, didn't know it was possible to love my wife and children any more than I already did but it's not even comparable to after this the appreciation I have for for my wife's companionship and and my children um, but I guess that's about it um, but overall it was just an incredible experience with incredible people incredible friends and I wouldn't take anything for it uh, honestly, it'll probably take like uh, a couple weeks to process the entire trip, but uh, just right off hand, we're, you know, we're packing up, we're getting ready to head out. Um, the big takeaway for me on this trip was a couple things. One was, for me, it allowed me to kind of strip away everything in life from, you know, all the superficial things and really, just, you know, the work life, you're, you don't have your phone, you don't have emails, you're not in contact with anybody, it's just you and you're, you're hunting and you're surviving. And that allowed me to really get to the core of who I am, I feel like. I feel like I really, it allowed me to process and um, kind of, just kind of, I don't know, bring to the forefront things that are important in my life, things that, uh, that really matter. Um, again, it just kind of stripped away all the, all the junk and it really left me at the core of who I am. And I think at the end of it, I'm going back a better man 
than when I came, just because it allowed me that experience to um, be with my brothers and, and, and the camaraderie of all of it. The fellowship, of course, is amazing. Even though we weren't successful in getting an elk, we had an amazing time. And then also it just teaches you to persevere. You know, you come here and we could take this as a loss and quit, or we can go back, like John Andrew said this morning, we can go back, we can learn more, we can get better, we can get stronger, we can get in better shape, and we can grow because of it. So we're learning, we're not losing. Um, and, and yeah, there's there's so many things. It's really hard to say one specific thing, but just the opportunity to escape and spend some great quality time with my friends who are more like brothers than friends and, uh, and really self-evaluate a little bit, think about things that I want to fix in my own life, think about things that matter to me. Um, those are some of the big takeaways. Closing, I think, you know, the trip was, even though we didn't kill anything, was a success. I think we learned a ton about elk hunting. Um, it was a, just a great experience with, with all of our uh, hunting buddies, and just like Jeremy said, um, kind of like our brothers. Um, and I think it's just been awesome all around. Um, we, we prepared before we came. But next time, we know we need to prepare a little bit more. Um, one thing that I will change is how I eat and my food. Um, but other than that, man, I mean, I think, I think it's all around good trip, good success, great time, uh, just being in the outdoors with all the things that's going on in the world right now. Uh, this was just a, a good escape, um, and that, that's about it. Well, it's the last day, and we're getting ready to head to the house. Uh, we've been here. 10 days, I guess, uh, a lot different from 2019. Had all the snow and stuff early and it kind of melted off when we finally got to hunt. I guess the biggest thing, the reason why I come out here to do this is, is uh, it gets me off the couch and gives me a reason to maybe try to get a little bit healthier, to spend time with my family. Man, I miss them right now. And uh, I've had a good time with these boys. Not boys, these men. and. Uh, I enjoy being around them, I enjoy hunting, and uh, can't wait to come back again next year. Learned a lot this year, was in better shape, so I feel a little bit better. And uh, again, like I said, this just gives me a reason to try to stay a little bit healthier, a little bit longer, and enjoy what God's given us, because, man, he's an artist. A friend of mine told me that today, this week. I seen him a picture, he said, he's an artist, ain't he? He is, he is, it's amazing. So, thank you, I appreciate it, and uh, God bless you. I don't know, man. It's hard to put into words what you get out of a hunt like this. Uh, I guess for me, I have wanted to do this kind of hunt since I was probably a little boy, since I first saw an elk get killed on video as a kid. So I've just always wanted to do backcountry, backpacking, get in there and live with them. You know, I've just always wanted to do that kind of hunt. And just finally here in the last few years got to the point in my life where I could actually afford to do that and uh, am able to do it. So. Uh, it's hard to put into words what you think about it, man. But to me, turkey hunting and elk hunting is the, is the purest form of hunting that you can do, man. You're on the animal's level. You're you're just out there. You know, you're trying to to trick up an 800-pound animal into coming into a cow, doing all that stuff. Just all the strategy, all that. Just. So that's the hunting part of it that I just absolutely love. And the other part about elk hunting is so good for you, you know, you get, it gives you a reason to, uh, to hike, to exercise, to work out in the off season, to get better, you know. It actually gives you a go. It's more than just sitting in a tree stand somewhere waiting on some deer to walk by, which, to be honest, kind of bores me to death anymore. But So I just absolutely, I love everything about it. We're, we're packing up to leave and you know, I probably on the way home I'll be tearing up because I'll be wanting to come straight back. I just uh, care that much about it. It's that much fun, even though we're not even successful. You know, it's just uh, it's just a life changing kind of deal, man. There, uh, I'd like to encourage other people to do it, but in a way, you know, in a selfish way, I don't want anybody around. I want to keep it to myself, but uh, so you got to be careful with that, but. You know, it's, it's a life-changing hunt, man. I, I told these guys coming in, I said, when you get done with this hunt, you'll you'll talk about it for the rest of your life. And you really will. It, it just uh, tears you right down to the core, man. You're living in the, 
absolute wilderness. If you're in trouble, there's no help coming. There's no way to call. There's nobody coming after you. You know, it's just, uh, it's just kind of a raw kind of deal, man. Kind of a primitive feeling. So I love everything about it. Can't wait to do it again next year. Hit it even harder next year. Uh, I've learned a ton, man, in the last few years on this stuff. So just putting, uh, put all that knowledge to work and uh, just come at it harder next year. That's my plan.